So how does the condenser work? I'll show you by running the model. So I'll pause it so we can view the results. You can see that the displays are automatically updated according to the, what the, the content of the bus signals. So I'll pause it for now. So if we look at the, flow, the first flow display, this is the hot ammonia gas that's going through the condenser. It's going at a percentage of 99% ammonia in the solution. It has a temperature of 328 Kelvin and it's mostly gas. How Actually, it's 100% gas. How do I know that? By looking at this X in H3, which is one which says that it's 100% gas. As it exits the condenser, this is the second display over here, we can see that it cooled down by 20, 25 degrees Kelvin. Now it's all liquid. The concentration is, of course, still the same. The output water heated to 300 degree, 10 degrees Kelvin, that's like 7 degrees higher than the 30 degrees we input there, and the water is mostly, is all liquid. I would also like to show you how you can define the condenser to fit your system requirements. To do that, you double click on the condenser to open its mask. And in this case, we modeled it as a heat exchanger. So you can define what kind of flow direction it has, counter, cross, or parallel flow. You can define many properties, like the actual thermal mass of the condenser, how it loses heat to the environment, the temperature of the environment, and many others. And once you click OK, this is all taken into consideration when the heat transfer takes place here between the two flows, as we just saw. So now I'll zoom out. So I've been talking all this time about ammonia and water. How does the model know what's the saturation temperature of water or at which the temperature ammonia evaporates? How does it know about these two substances and their chemical properties? Well, this is done using the so-called model setup block. What this block does basically is it sets up the information about the chemical media for the model. How do we do that? I'll show you on the mask of the block. I'll double click on it. So we define here a database of all the chemical media that are available with all their thermodynamic properties. What we have here is a list of these chemical media, a large list. What we do is select the components that we need in this particular model and then once we click OK, the model setup block will download all the chemical properties for these two components into the MATLAB workspace and makes it available for the rest of the Thermolib blocks. In this case, we've selected water and ammonia for our system because no other elements are needed. This database is completely expandable. That means if you see that you have a compound that is not available here, you can easily define it in the media database. And then once you save it as a MAT file, you will be able to see it in this list, select it, and then later on, you will be able to see it also in these dialogues that we just saw listed here with the other elements. Our purpose in this example was to show you the essence of Thermolib, that is thermodynamic modeling and simulating. It complements Simulink's graphical interface and takes care of thermodynamics so that the focus remains on the process itself. We'll go now on for our next example. And that is the solar thermal plant. This is a simplified chart for a solar thermal plant. So how does the system work? What we have here is cold water is pumped to the solar collectors. In the solar collectors, water is heated to high temperatures. The resulting steam is then passed onto the turbine. Inside the turbine, it experiences a pressure loss. And due to this pressure loss, power is generated and eventually electricity. The hot water is then passed through a condenser to gain heat and then cooled down and pumped into the solar collector system again. Now I'll show you the model in Simulink. So this is what the model in Simulink looks like. It's pretty similar to the one we saw before in that we see a lot of the same thermolib blocks that we used before, like the gas dryer and the mixer and the pump, the heat exchanger. We also have here a turbine, a tank. These are all pre-programmed blocks that we used. 
But what we also have in this example is a block that was made up of thermolip blocks and user-defined components, and that's the solar collector. If I look under the solar collector, I'll go under the mask, and then you see how the collector is modeled. So what we have here is we have defined the thermal mass of the collector, and then a heater that heats the incoming flow according to the amount of energy that is gained from the sun. The power that is gained from the sun is calculated depending on the latitude, the time of the day, the altitude, the efficiency, the slope of the collector itself, and other information. And this information is then used to calculate the incoming solar power, and that's used in the heater to heat the flow like I just mentioned. So what is cool about this model is that in this case, you can try out different implementations of the solar collector and test it in the same model. This is actually what we do during our work. As long as you have well-defined inputs and outputs, that is the bus signals, the flows that are going in are compatible with the rest of the blocks, you can replace the model here and test out different implementations. What we've also included here is a small controller. What this controller does is make sure that the cycle does not run when the temperature at the solar collector is not hot enough. That means it tests the temperature at the solar collector and only when it is above a certain level does the pump run and the cycle continues. This example is a starting point of what you can do if you have the right tools. You can model a complete solar power plant, and this is what we've done with steam drums, pipes, several solar collectors, using these pre-configured, pre-programmed components and adding your new components into them. And the results are powerful in that you can design the whole system in Simulink and then test it against your controller. I'll go now to our next example. Actually, we have way many more examples, but due to time restrictions, we cannot go over them in a lot of detail, so I'm just going to go very quickly over them. For another one that we had here is the combined cycle power plant. As you can see here, this is the flow chart of the combined cycle power plant. And again, you can model this power plant in Thermolib using the correct thermodynamic tool, the implementation is quite easy. What we see in this example, what we haven't seen before, is for example here we have the combustion chamber where chemical reactions take place, but there'll be more about this later. What you can also model is a fuel cell vehicle. This example is a good way to show you how to use different toolboxes. What we've done here is we've used sim power and sim driveline to model the actual vehicle and then use Thermolib to model the electric power supply and that is the fuel cell. So you'll see here inside the fuel cell we have Thermolib blocks like a fuel cell stack and then we define the interface to some power so that the system can run. Another example is air conditioning inside a car. This is a quick flow scheme and and the scheme is again implemented in Thermolib. Here we have two controllers that control the heat inside the air cabin and the humidity. So the previous examples we've had showed a range of processes that you, with the right thermodynamic tools you can model. This next example is a bit simpler but it actually focuses on a very challenging area in thermodynamic modeling and that's chemical reaction. The reason it's challenging is because chemical reactions are highly nonlinear, and there is a high dependency on the temperature and pressure at which the reaction is taking place. This is further complicated if you have more than one reaction taking place in the same mixture, and the complexity increases. Not only that, you also have this heat exchange taking place between the mixture itself and the mixture and the environment. So what we have here, for instance, to show you is a small figure that shows an initial mixture of methane and water for methane reformation, and then we show you the different concentrations at different temperatures. And a proper thermodynamic tool should be able to model according to the temperature what is the concentration of the end result. Our solution was to implement a basic plug that, that solved all these highly nonlinear equations, and we built a chemical equilibrium reactor around that. To show you, our next example is of methane reformation. 